it's a family heirloom. You want it to stay in the family. We're the Armed Attorneys. We're on a mission to make life for the law-abiding gun owner just a little bit easier by sharing fast and factual gun law information. Today, we're talking about what happens to your guns when you die. Make sure to stick around to the end for our pro tip on how to increase the likelihood that the person you want to receive the gun actually gets it. But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And to kick off our conversation, Emily, what firearms are considered part of your estate? Yeah, so we're talking about here um, your firearms that are not community property and your firearms that are not held in trust. So for the purpose of this discussion, we are not talking about NFA items here. Um, we are talking about everything else that is not community property. And so when we see the distribution of assets, it really falls into two big buckets. That's either if you die with a will and the, the courts are going to administer that will mm -hmm. or dying without a will, what's called dying intestate. And that kind of leaves it up to the government of how your property is distributed. Now, if you want someone specifically to get your guns, obviously you're going to have to execute a will and direct the court. Hey, these are my, these are my wishes. This is how I want my property to be distributed. Now, we have this kind of important federal law, and, and what does that say, Emily? Yeah, so, and interestingly enough, um, your firearms that pass through your estate are exempted from the general federal transfer laws. So um, we're not worried about interstate transfers here. We're not worried about 4473s, background checks. As far as federal law is concerned, and now, of course, states can get more restrictive here, but as far as federal law is concerned, um, these pass like any of the rest of your, it passes like your microwave and your coffee table. I mean, it is, it is the same thing. So really what we need to worry about, and of course, state by state basis. So, you know, if you're in California or Massachusetts or New York or New Jersey, you know, this is not directed at you. But generally for most of us, what we have to worry about is, um, is the person I'm leaving this to prohibited or Maybe do they live in one of those restrictive states? Can they own it there? Do you want to elaborate on that? Yes. And so what we're talking about is 27 CFR 478.30. And that's saying that, hey, these firearms can pass in the customary manner, but that's not the end of the story. If the firearm is prohibited in the state where you know the beneficiary lives, let's say I live in the state of California and they have all kinds of restrictions, um, I may not be allowed to inherit that gun or take possession of it. And the same thing goes for, let's say, you know, you live in maybe not a restrictive state, but you're a prohibited person. Let's say I lived in the state of Texas, but I have a felony conviction. Well, then obviously under federal law, I wouldn't be allowed to possess firearms or ammunition for life. And so just because a will would maybe direct a piece of property, including a firearm to a person, doesn't mean that they, they would actually be allowed to take possession. So assuming that the person is not prohibited, the firearm's legal in the state, Federal law doesn't require the person to jump through a whole bunch of hoops, but that kind of brings us to our attorney pro tip of the day and how we make sure the firearms we want to give to somebody, you know, it's a, it's an, a family heirloom. You want it to stay in the family. How do they get it, Emily? Yeah. So the best way is in that will to make a special bequest. So you want to make sure that the firearm that you're talking about, make, model, and serial number is specifically bequeathed to the person you want it to go to. And why is this important? Because when you make a special bequest, those items are some of the last items to be liquidated to pay the debts of your estate. So if you let your firearms pass in with just, you know, the rest, you know, all of my possessions to Richard, well, those firearms might be liquidated to pay my estate's debts. Whereas if I specifically bequeath those guns, they are some of the last things to be liquidated. They're far more likely to make it to their intended destination. Well, we hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, consider subscribing and hitting that like button and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. As always, please question and comment below. And until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.